Hi, I'm Mike Coe. With me today, the chart master Carter Braxenworth. Fast money and options action remain dark while CNBC covers the 2022 Winter Olympics from Beijing. Carter and I continue to try and provide a little bonus content in the meantime. Let's start by covering some of today's more notable options action. Some of these stocks are not ones that might get much play on CNBC typically. The first example is Blue Cora, ticker BCOR. This Bellevue, Washington-based financial services company offers a DIY tax filing service called Tax Act and a tax advantage wealth management service called Avantax. Lucora is about a one and a quarter billion dollar enterprise value business that typically moves quite a lot on earnings, about 10%. And the options market seem to be expecting similar moves when they report on the 16th, with full year EPS estimates of about $1.70 for 2021 and $1.74 for 2022, so trading about 10 times earnings. The company is trading well below the 15 times multiple across financial services more broadly. Carter, as we get into tax season, usually their highest revenue quarter by a good margin, how are the charts looking? Well, this is an interesting setup and let's try to sort of figure it out together. Here is a standard daily bar chart with no real judgments made by me, no annotations. But what we do know is it's been wide ranging and yet still stuck in a range. We're near the top of the range. And so you can see the authority of the 18 plus level. Now, if you look at the next chart, you'll see this in more perspective. So there is the tight range, right? You have the COVID plunge. Um, interestingly, if you think about that first low in March, not many stocks in the stock market went back to their COVID low. I mean, that's really bad, but it held and put in a double bottom and then advanced sharply, of course, in the September, March period. And now this tight, tight range, uh, the judgment here is that it breaks out from this range and we would be long. We did see a lot of bullish activity in the options markets on uh, Blue Cora. So another name that we're taking a look at, Methanex, ticker M-E-O-H. They reported late last month on the 26th, if memory serves, and the stock's up about 12% since. We saw a lot of activity in the 50 strike calls today. Carter, some of these chemical companies are not well loved by the sell side and at about 10 times trailing earnings for the group generally and Methanex specifically. Does this one still have some room to run? Street's average price target is about 52 bucks a share, suggesting only about 5% of upside. Let's take a look. Uh, I've got several ways to draw the lines here. Now this uh, importantly is a longer term chart than. Uh, the prior stock. This is going back some five years. So these are weekly bars. Now, one way to draw the lines as seen there is a head and shoulders, meaning an important reversal formation. Another way to draw the lines would be something otherwise known as a cup and handle. And you'll see that here on the next chart. So it's the same chart. Let's toggle back and forth. First one, second one, first one, second one. The chart's the same, but the, the, the annotations uh, tell a story, but in a different way, where you have a, a peak, you have a plunge, and you have a process where you reverse from bear to bull. And now the final chart, and this is what's important, is we're to the penny up against that trend line that's been in effect since the stock's peak at 80 some three, four years ago. So does it break out from here or does it not? I think it does, and 55 might be even a little bit light. Uh, when you get momentum, you'll see the analyst community moving up their price targets. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting, too, because, you know, one of the things we were talking about before we went on the air here was whether or not there was really going to be a big sort of rotation from sort of the momentum and growth-oriented stocks to some of the more value-oriented uh, oriented sectors, like the chemicals at 10 times earnings for the group, they certainly are cheap. Okay, so perhaps one of the ultimate reopening trades, definitely the ultimate reopening trade, as far as my son Tommy is concerned, theme park operator, Six Flags Entertainment, ticker symbol SIX. It's scheduled to report on the 24th. Now last quarter, the stock fell sharply after they reported, but I assume investors aren't concerned with the losses of about 400 million for uh, 2020 or even 2021's $1.43 in EPS, but are really looking forward Right now, the street's expecting the company to make about two bucks and a quarter for full year 2022, which puts it at about 20 times earnings. And analysts are pretty bullish. The average price target for this one's about 23% above the current stock price. The past year has been quite the roller coaster, pardon my pun there, as the share price whipsawed on COVID variants. And it seems like the mid 40s has been a point of resistance. Today, it traded seven times the average daily call volume mostly at the money 45 strike calls. Carter, is this poised to finally break out two or maybe through last year's highs over 50? 
interestingly, this chart is set up very similar uh, to what we just saw. In fact, you have what's called converging trend lines. So you work yourself into the apex of formation. There's a real standoff between bears and bulls. At some point, though, all standoffs get resolved. Uh, I, I believe it's resolved up, hence the uh, green arrow. But if we have the ability, we might be able to go back to the Methanex chart, the last one. And if we can't, that's fine too. But take a look. Methanex, Six Flags. Six Flags, right. it's the same setup. And that's the, one of the most important things about charts. It doesn't matter whether the company sells soda water or sushi or sneakers. The formations have been uh, happening for years. Play it to the upside. All right, excellent. Another name that saw well above average call volume was AstraZeneca, ticker AZN. This company reports tomorrow and it has typically not moved that much on earnings, but last quarter it fell sharply. It fell over six and a half percent after they reported. Now what's curious here is that although there was a lot of activity in the 57 and a half and 60 strike calls, if we add up all the purchases and sales of both calls and puts, in the aggregate, options traders actually reduced their exposure to AstraZeneca today by about the equivalent of $10 million worth of stock or so. Carter, do the charts suggest we may be poised for a big move or a small one? And in which way would you lean? So also an interesting setup here and then several ways to draw the lines. So a known formation, a reversal formation of sorts is something called a head and shoulders where a strong stock makes a peak and then backs away and then makes a new peak and backs away and then makes an attempt to rally again, but can't get above the prior peak or the preceding intermediate peak, forming the right shoulder, head and shoulders. So not a particularly good formation. Uh, take a look at a longer term chart. Now there's the head and shoulders in the context of what? The stock's former all time high in 2020. So the final chart, and this shows we have a double top, meaning this stock could not get it back above where it was in 2020 and is now starting to fail not only one formation double top, but a minor head and shoulders. It's just not good. So you're thinking probably 60 to 90 days, this thing could be actually substantially more than 10% lower than where it's trading if I'm looking at those charts correctly. That's right. All right. Okay. As in ticker symbol K for Kellogg's company, the cereal maker. They are also reporting tomorrow soggy cereal sales, cold cereal sales, sales fell about 20% for the four weeks ended January 23rd, a 12% average price increase offsetting what is actually a 28% decline in volume. 52 week volume on cereal sales saw about a 15% decline. All of this was going on while General Mills saw actually 12% growth over the same last four weeks. Granted, this is partially the result of a 12 week cereal worker strike, which has since been resolved and which should help inventories. Carter, Kellogg has not behaved as if investors have much of an appetite. No, uh, and you'll see in the chart that once again, we have a certain kind of formation, but this one is working. Its day-to-day -day performance is poor, absolute, poor relative to its sector, relative to the stock market in general, and it is flirting with breaking below uh, the upward converging line, whereas the other two stocks that are in the similar situation are th threatening to or prospectively about to break above uh, and to the upside. So very interesting, one, how similar they are and uh, how often they are resolved. Uh, very important. Not very cheery, which is uh, sort of like Cheerios, which I think is a different cereal maker than Kellogg's. Okay, that's it for us today. Thanks, Carter. I'm Mike Co. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. For more options, action, bonus content, check in with us and we'll see you tomorrow.